is Cincinnati Edition on 91.7 WVXU. I'm Lucy May. Later in the program, we'll hear about a program that is helping to close the tri-state's tech gap while also making the local IT talent pool more diverse. But first, for nearly 60 years, Greater Cincinnati Foundation has focused on making the community stronger by linking donors and their money to the region's needs. The foundation has focused more keenly on Greater Cincinnati's racial inequities in recent years, with initiatives such as All in Cincinnati and a Racial Justice Fund to advance fairness and justice, particularly in the black community. Joining us to discuss the foundation's focus on equity are Greater Cincinnati Foundation Racial Justice Fund Director Michael Coffey. Welcome, Michael. Good afternoon. Thank you. Greater Cincinnati Foundation President and CEO Ellen Katz. Thanks for being here, Ellen. Thank you, too, Lucy. And All In Cincinnati Executive Director Denisha Porter. Welcome, Denisha. Thank you for having me. Yeah. If you have questions or comments, you can join our conversation by calling 513-419-7100 or emailing talk at wvxu.org. Ellen, I'd like to start with you. Tell us about um, Greater Cincinnati Foundation's history when it comes to racial justice and equity and why the focus has become more intense in recent years. Oh, my goodness. Well, the commitment of the foundation goes back well before my time. Um, Probably uh, the greatest catalyst for GCF's focus was in 2001 when Timothy Thomas was tragically killed in our city and um, the city responded. And uh, GCF uh, stepped forward and convened funders and made some critical investments that resulted in things we know today like Strive, Uh, the Minority Business Accelerator, um, all kinds of things that have been absolutely instrumental uh, to moving our city forward. And I'd have to um, mention the collaborative agreement as well, since that's such a critical opportunity for refresh right now. So um, of late, you know, in the past um, few years, there's been um, a calling in our country, and we really look at it as, as the work of our generation, Um, But I will say that uh, GCF really pointed its bow very firmly toward racial equity in uh, 2016, shortly after I'd arrived. uh, We took a number of uh, friends from the region out to L.A. to experience um, an equity summit put on by PolicyLink. And it really turned on our bright lights. And we really focused our mission on creating a more equitable region, um, as well as uh, lifting our vibrancy. So um, we've been on a journey. Um, The journey is um, more compelling than ever. And um, we're proud to be making the progress that we are. And why did GCF feel it was so important to, to shine that light and really, really hone in on that focus? Well, um, the data sort of bears out um, what the challenges are that we're having as a region. Uh, When I joined GCF, the Child Poverty Collaborative had uh, just come into being, and we were really looking at how do we reduce poverty across the region. Um, And as we looked more closely, um, it became very, very clear that uh, our issues are really uh, divided along, along racial lines in our region. Um, So at GCF, we really, really got focused on um, systemic racism and how racism is really built into systems that are creating issues for people of color that prevent their being able to uh, move up from an economic standpoint in our region. And Denisha, I want to talk about All in Cincinnati and the report in 2018 that kind of launched some of that work. Tell us about All in Cincinnati and and give us a little background on that 2018 report and and what it found. Sure. So All in Cincinnati is a racial equity coalition, and we're working to dismantle racial inequities in our five priority areas of health, housing, education, economic mobility, and justice with the goal to uplift and elevate Black women here in Hamilton County. And so, as you mentioned, the report was released in 2018, and it highlighted a bunch of racial disparities aligning with those priority areas. So in 2019, I was actually hired to lead the charge. And what I really love about All in Cincinnati is that um, it's uniquely positioned, having community members, policymakers, and everyone at the table to help create those policy and systems changes through authentic community engagement. Um, We do our work through three pillars, which include truth, telling the truth about uh, racial equity here in Hamilton County, 
racial healing, having those bold, authentic uh, conversations about systemic racism and race from the perspective of our common humanity and then transformation. And that's uh, doing change through our policy and systems change level work. And we meet every uh, fourth Thursday of the month from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. to do all of this work. That's great. And you, we talked a little bit about that 2018 report. I remember covering that at the time, and then a number that really jumped out at me was, I believe the report found that the region's annual gross domestic product would have been $9.9 billion higher in 2014 if minority residents' in, residents incomes were comparable to their white neighbors. Um, mm-hmm. Such a big number. How mm-hmm. how has that informed your work, and and what kind of reaction do you get to the to that number and the data that was was in that report? Yeah. So you you just said ten billion dollars more. So when you think about equity and the definition of equity, meeting people where they are, also creating an environment where no uh, outcome is determined by race and actually growing the assets in the community to be $10 billion more. It's a win-win for Hamilton County to actually focus on equity. And we're doing that with All in Cincinnati. The whole goal of All in Cincinnati is to make it economically prosperous for um, Black women and and the whole region. And so by really drilling down um, and looking at the root causes and making changes from the policy and system level, we really make it uh, an effort to make long-term change. Hmm. And it sounds like that really is an effort to make long-term change that doesn't only benefit um, Black women or Black residents, but but really would benefit the entire region, if I understand the, the perspective correctly. Exactly. You got it right, Lucy. Okay. <laughs> well, my, Michael, I want to turn to your work, too. I know you do a lot at Greater Cincinnati Foundation, but one of the um, areas you oversee is the Racial Justice Fund. Tell us about that fund and, and when and why it was established. Yes, thank you, Lucy. We, we can't talk about the Racial Justice Fund without showing or at least emphasizing the connection with all in Cincinnati or even the connection with the racial equity matters work that we're doing. But I will start with with the Racial Justice Fund and move to emphasize those connections. So the Racial Justice Fund really came from our board's leadership. You know, in 2020, um, after sitting through and experiencing the groundwater and the phase one sessions, our board members asked themselves, what more can they do? What more could our institution do? And they really put the flag in the sand and said, hey, we're going to commit Uh, resources to go deep, have a deep dive into supporting um, Black power and Black wealth and the local Black community through supporting policy advocacy and community organizing and just the anchors of those institutions. So we looked at, again, um, Ellen mentioned data, we looked at uh, national rankings of uh, the Black community in Cincinnati, um, specifically the Annie Casey Kids Count Report, and we're in the bottom 10 uh, in terms of places where Black children are thriving. Uh, and then there's research put out by Bloomberg Philanthropies that talks about um, Cincinnati in reference to how well Black women are doing in the city. So the Racial Justice Fund is really looking at creating um, Cincinnati as a space where Black children th- thrive, Black families thrive. And it's, um, you know, a, a, a significant proportion of our resources, but a small percentage, but it is, a, it is a commitment and it does reflect our values in this space at this time right now. And it is a, a, a one step on our journey, one step on our racial equity journey. It is the latest step, but it stands on the shoulders of all in Cincinnati and the Racial Equity Matters series, which is a community education series uh, focused on creating a shared analysis and shared language around race. It's great um, that we here are so polite, um, but at the Greater Cincinnati Foundation, being focused on problem solving, we need to not just be polite, but be informed and be actionable. And these conversations that are happening on a monthly basis um, are spaces where we can look at 400 years of our country's history, our country's economic history, and really create um, partnerships that are informed by that that history, that accurate history. Mm-hmm. And I have to give Denisha and, and all in Cincinnati credit because that is the group of people who asked for these trainings. They said, hey, Mike, you know, we're community leaders, we're experts in our different silos, but we need to be better. We need to do more. We need to show the intersections between these issues. Um, so please, can you find some people to come in and speak with us about 
justice speak with us about housing, education, transportation, and how they all intersect and build on one another. Um, so that was the real seed for the Racial Equity Matters work. And you talk, you, you referenced the Racial Equity Matters conversations and those, um, you know, important and sometimes difficult conversations that, that people are having as part of that. How many people have gone through that training? And, and explain to us a little bit of the, about the groundwater and, and phase one uh, programs you referenced. Sure. Since 2018, we've had 2,500 people come through these sessions. And that number reflects the, the unique number of participants. Several, many of those people have come through several times because we want them to come back. We invite alumni to come back. And through uh, the generosity of our presenting sponsor, BI3, you know, we just have been able to really grow that number and uh, when necessary, remove cost as a barrier. So for the, for the most part, um, this has just been offered um, to the community, whoever is available, whoever um, we, we have space for. We started off in person at the Freedom Center. Of course, we've moved virtually now and we look forward to, to going back to in person and having people in our Hale Community Hub because it is a different conversation when it's on the computer um, and we want people to connect with the new people. We want them to expand not only their understanding of U.S. economic history, but their, their networks and their relationships. So with Groundwater, it's a lecture. It's a data walk. It's not as engaging, um, but it gives people time just to process um, the concept of, of fish, lake, and groundwater. And I don't want to spoil the training by getting too deep into that metaphor, um, but the train does spend a lot of time using that metaphor to talk about some very complex issues. And then we ask people to come back for the phase one session, which is two days. So groundwater is an afternoon and phase one is two full days. And groundwater, uh, we actually had it at the Harriet Tubman Theater and we filled it up. So that was over 300 people. Mm -hmm. um, now we are restricted to 100 people virtually. But phase one is, is a small group, so maybe, maybe 25, 30 people, because we really want everyone to talk. Denisha, Michael was just talking about how important All in Cincinnati was in kind of uh, launching and, and requesting this training. What are you hearing from people who have gone through the training? Oh, wonderful things. And I can even think back to my experience when I went through the training. And uh, we actually had several people really get into the training a certain people even cried. I think I remember our facilitator cried and a police officer cried just because they were able to process all of the information that was talked about in one place. I think truthfully, we all know about systemic racism, but we know about it in bits and pieces. But the way that racial equity matters puts it all together, you really see um, how they all play on one another. And so it was it was really um an emotional but eye-opening experience. And then from that, a lot of the people who attend Racial Equity Matters training actually attend All In Cincinnati. And so they talked about really wanting to expand this to other entities. And what we did was we partnered with the city of Cincinnati to actually make it a policy. It was spearheaded by Vice Mayor um, Kearney to actually encourage city department heads, city administration, the uh, city manager's office, the mayor's office to all attend racial equity matters, uh, including groundwater and phase one. Hmm. And Ellen, uh, Greater Cincinnati Foundation has been very transparent about its interest in doing this work and has really um, had discussions with the community about this work. What have, have you and the foundation's leadership heard back from the community regarding the, the work Greater Cincinnati Foundation is doing and, and the work that, you, that needs to be done both internally and, and externally? Hmm. Well, uh, first and foremost, you know, that we're on the right track. Um, that this is critical work. I mean, I think the fact that we've been so focused, as you mentioned at the top of the show, on this issue for such a long time, I think there's recognition that this was not just a response to what happened in the summer of 2020. So the fact that, um, you know, we've had this focus, we have the experience, we have a lot of knowledge, um, has really uh, given credibility to us um, in the community. Um, and then I will say, um, you know, speaking of transparency, that there was a time um, a couple of years ago where we went back out to the community as we were ready to, you know, dig deeper and uh, focus more clearly. 
and asked, you know, is GCF the right organization uh, to be doing this work? And we got some feedback saying that, you know, maybe not yet. And that there's perhaps some work that GCF could do around equity from the inside out. So we have spent the last um, couple few years really focused on ourselves and how we as an organization can show up really walking the talk to sort of take our credibility and capability to the next level. So some things have happened inside of GCF that have really allowed us to address equity through every single part of our organization. And it's a a really um, exciting story. Um, And we feel like it's just going to help us sort of cement our principles into everything that we're doing. And Ellen, as the president and CEO of GCF, what is the goal? How are you looking at this focus and and trying to measure success? Um, Well, we're looking at um, opportunities for upward mobility. Uh, We would like to see that um, there are more quality jobs in the region that are able to employ everyone who lives here. Um, We would like to see that uh, disparities no longer exist just based on zip code. Um, And then there are other things, Lucy, in terms of um, outcomes that we're looking for in terms of who we are as an organization. You know, you mentioned that we exist to partner with generous people in this region to make it more equitable and vibrant. So we are actually um, connecting with donors and helping them understand the power and potential of equity for our region. And we're counting those donors who are co-investing with us or making investments in opportunities that help close gaps. So just the number of what we call equity-inspired donors connected with GCF is something that we're counting and watching rise every day. Hmm. Denisha, how is all in Cincinnati? Um, what kind of data are you all looking at? How are, how are you all looking to measure success from, from that initiative's perspective? Yeah, so we're definitely looking at putting into place all of the policy and system changes that were outlined in the All In Cincinnati report. And I'm happy to say that um, we've already completed over 50% of our strategic plan, mostly in our health, education, and justice priority areas, looking really to focus in 2022 on our economic mobility and our housing strategies. Um, We're also taking into account Uh, the amount of people that we train on racial equity. And I'm happy to say with um, Cincinnati's National Day of Racial Healing in 2021 and just this past January in 2022, we were able to train over 2,200 people around racial equity concepts, justice, inclusion, equity. Um, And then we also are looking, as Ellen said, decreasing those racial disparities in those priority areas, looking to um, decrease the amount of chronic disease here in Hamilton County as it relates to um, diseases such as cancer, heart disease, asthma, infant mortality, things of that nature, making sure that we have great educational outcomes for our children here, also making sure that people have access to great jobs and that are making um, a great wage here in Hamilton County. Is uh, Tanisha, in your work and with the conversations that, that uh, you and the team have as part of All in Cincinnati, do you find that some people still have trouble making that connection between systemic racism and things like, you know, health disparities and asthma and um, what, what, where, is it, where are folks on the learning curve with things like that? No, I'm happy to say with all of these different initiatives, people are learning it from different places. So um, I like to think of our work from the head, heart and hand space. So um, head could be aligned to racial equity matters. Racial healing could be aligned to heart and then making the policy and systems changes can be aligned to, to the hand work. And it's really about tapping into the best way that you learn and the best way that you think you can make change. So I think we're actually um, in a great place here um, in Hamilton County. I think Hamilton County has so much potential, and I'm looking forward to see what we can do over the next five years. And Michael, we talked a little bit about the the Racial Justice Fund. I know the fund has made some investments. Can you tell us a little bit about those investments and what how they're kind of helping our community get get closer to these goals? 
I'd be happy to. One of the guiding principles of the All in Cincinnati Coalition is that local leaders are national leaders. So that value is a big part of the Race for Justice Fund. We want to make sure that when we're in discussions about affordable housing, when we're in discussions about wages and benefits, that people most affected by those inequities are at the table making those decisions. So the Race for Justice Fund is really looking to support groups that are doing that type of community organizing and that type of leadership development and that type of just groundwork to make sure that our democracy is, is working the way that it was um, you know, on paper designed to. So, so that's a big part of the Race for Justice Fund. And another, another aspect is that we're not trying to make a thousand grants. You know, we're, we're, we understand our scale and scope here in Cincinnati, and we know that there are institutions that are already making a difference well before the creation of the Race for Justice Fund. So we just want to build into certain um, existing organizations as well as receive and be in dialogue and relationship with new ideas and new leaders who kind of say, hey, can we approach that same challenge from a different way? So we're only in year two of the Race for Justice Fund. Um, and yes, we have um, uh, made over a million dollars in, in, in grants and investments, but we know it's gonna take a lot more than that just from a dollar perspective and a relationship perspective to move the needle here in our region. Ellen, what are some of the ways that people can help? If there are people hearing you all talk who are thinking, wow, I'd really like to be involved in this in this work on equity and engaged, what are some of the ways people can get involved and, and what are some of the ways people can help? Well, honestly, I would recommend that people sign up for Racial Equity Matters um, and have the educational experience and learning that, you know, to Denisha's point, might change the head, might change the heart, and might inspire what people can do with their hands. Um, and of course, I'd be remiss um, if I did not mention that um, the Greater Cincinnati Foundation, um, you know, does benefit from contributions from the community. Um, we do so much community leadership work and have an Empowering Communities Annual Fund that's really helping to drive the kind of work that Denisha and Michael are doing every day. So, um, you know, we, we welcome connections. We welcome calls. We're always interested in talking about people's interests in the community and uh, helping to matchmake, if you will, those inspirations with what we know exists in the community. And Michael, when are those next um, Racial Equity Matters trainings coming up? Do you happen to know? I, I do know, and, and this is published on our website, but we actually have a, uh, a phase one session, which is the two-day session I was mentioning earlier, and that is um, uh, March, early March. Um, registration is open on our website. Um, actually, April uh, phase one uh, is open as well. So April 19th and 20th is, is that phase one. I realize that some of your listeners, it may be too soon to get in on a March session. So I'll give this April 19th and 20th date. And then I can also give the May date, May 18th. That's when we have our afternoon session, the groundwater session that has capacity for a hundred people. Um, so there are sessions every month this year. So if, it, if none of these dates work for you, that's okay. We understand that. Um, we are offering this every year with, with our um, community partners and we want to find a time that works for your schedule. And if, if people find that they look at our website and the calendar on our website, none of those dates work for them, um, they should let us know that because we pick those dates with them in mind. And we do have some flexibility um, later in the year, of course, with, with offering some, some new dates that may work for people. Uh, maybe a Saturday. We, haven't, we don't have a Saturday scheduled um, uh, right now. But if I find that there are people who really want that, then we can do that. As the community foundation, as your community foundation, we, we want people to have access to this content. Ellen, how open do you think people, in, in terms of especially the, the big donors that, that you talk to, how open are, are people to having these conversations and learning this information? Mm, uh, very. It's really exciting. Um, we've had many donors come through the Racial Equity Matters series. Uh, we've had people attend uh, learning sessions that we've done, for example, in the Racial Justice Fund. I mean, you know, everyone's in a different place, Lucy, and we really respect that and honor that. Um, but I think that uh, the community in which we find ourselves and those who are involved in GCF 
really recognize that equity provides the greatest opportunity for growth and prosperity in our region. There is no greater strategy. And your call out of the $9.9 billion per year in increased GDP is probably one of the most lucrative strategies we could um, ever bring to the table. So um, there's been um, a lot of interest and involvement. We're really excited about it. Mm -hmm. Well, I really want to thank our guests, Greater Cincinnati Foundation Racial Justice Fund Director Michael Coffey, Greater Cincinnati Foundation President and CEO Ellen Katz, and All In Cincinnati Executive Director Denisha Porter. Up next, a program is helping to close the tech gap in town by training people for IT jobs without the college debt. This is Cincinnati Edition.